Hi everyone, welcome y'all. I'm so glad to have this moment to record. I have been waiting for this. No boys running around. The newborn is sleeping. CJ's at school and Chris is at work. So here we go y'all. My labor and delivery with baby number two. Oh my lord. First and foremost, I had a C-section with CJ. Okay, and it was an elective C-section. I chose because this boy was such a slow dilator. He gave me such a hard time. And the C-section recovery, guys, was so hard. It was so hard to get my strength back. It was so hard to be myself again and just feel best. And I told myself this time around, I do not want a C-section. So I immediately told my medical team, I want to go for a V-back. And if nobody knows what that is, a V-back is a vaginal birth after cesarean. So my doctor team was in favor. They're like, okay, this is what needs to happen. I had to sign a waiver in case anything goes wrong. Everybody knows with a VBAC, the biggest risk is a uterine rupture. So that's where your incision is. It actually bursting and amniotic fluid basically leaking out into your gut. So anyhow, anywho, <laughs> um, there are some things that need to be in place for you to have a VBAC. And I was a little nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope my body does what it's supposed to do. And I have to give the credit to God on this one as always, because I prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and he helped me to have a successful VBAC. So guys, it all started with me, maybe about 35 weeks, just doing lots and lots of walking. If anybody knows me, just like my first pregnancy, I worked until I couldn't work no more. So I was at work and normal day, everything's going normal. Next thing we know, um, this was around CJ's birthday, CJ ends up catching a cold. Now, his cold led us to be out of work for 10 days. My husband and I work for the same company. CJ is also in the school that we work in. So we were all home on a COVID symptom just leave, which he didn't have COVID. He had a cold as always. So I said to my husband, I feel like these 10 days are for a reason. I feel like the baby could come any day now. Um, we were already done with CJ's birthday. So we are in the second week of, well, approaching the second week of November. So I remember us taking CJ to the zoo and we were walking and walking and walking. And I felt this weird twingy pain like two times as we were leaving the zoo. And I remember like, oh my God, what was that? I went to the bathroom, y'all, and my mucus plug was coming out. Woo! I was like, oh my God. I told Chris, I said, Chris, oh my God, I'm getting closer. Da, da, da. So I was due for a cervical exam at my OB um, and they had given me an, ultra, an ultrasound. So one day they did the ultrasound and then the next day they did the cervical exam. So the ultrasound, I was like, why are they doing an ultrasound? Like I was confused about that. When the cervical day came for them to check me, um, I was praying that I would be more dilated. The last time they checked me, I was two centimeters and I was 60% of face, which is miraculous because with CJ, I never passed one centimeter without Pitocin. He did not want to come out. So they checked me and I was three centimeters and 60% of face all on my own. And the perfect part about this is the VBAC requires that you go into labor on your own. It requires that you dilate on your own. Medical people do not want to give you anything unnecessary to um, maybe force your labor to start because of the, the risk of a uterine rupture. All right. So she sits there after she checks me. She's like, oh, you're at three centimeters, 60%. She's like, I'm going to call labor and delivery. I was like, oh, my God, this was November 10th, y'all. And I'm like, oh. so I text Chris real quick, like she's calling labor and delivery. She comes back in the room. She's like, all right, so I want you to know that based off of your ultrasound, your baby was five pounds, 14 ounces. And I'm looking at her like, whoa, because my stomach was huge, y'all. I mean, I was giant with my second baby all belly and so i'm like so is that all fluid in there she's like the point is is at this point in gestation i was 38 weeks she's like we encourage moms to deliver because maybe the placenta is not giving enough for the baby so i'm like okay that makes sense so she's like um labor and delivery would like to have you come in tomorrow 7 a.m so we can have a baby i was like <laughs> So she explained to me that she was going to do um, a balloon catheter. And I'll go into that a little bit later, guys. So I get into um, the hospital. We check in the next day. And um, she inserts the balloon catheter after I meet the nurse and do all the intro paperwork and the vitals. And, you know, they put the IVs, all that. So she, she comes in and she checks me and she puts this uh, 
catheter balloon thing up there. She goes, when you're four or five centimeters, it's going to fall out on its own. And I'm like, okay. So at first, yeah, I was on the ball. I loved the ball. I actually have my huge ball here that I used during my pregnancy. Um, but I asked for a ball. I was using a ball. I was, um, what's the word? Sitting upright. Just kept sitting upright to like encourage gravity with the baby, all that. As much as I wanted to lay down, I just kept sitting up. Um, just when I thought nothing was happening, um, and I was contracting, they did give me Pitocin, I'm sorry, they gave me very low dosage of Pitocin, and I was contracting, and it was tolerable, I was able to sleep through it, um, I told myself I want to get my epidural later, as much as I can take these contractions, I will get my epidural later, so she comes in after a minute, y'all, like, it was probably like an hour or two, maybe hour, maybe three hours, and she checks me, and she's like, oh yeah, your catheter fell out. Oh, you're at a six centimeter. And my whole water just broke all over the dag on bed, y'all. Like, it just broke all over. And I was like, <gasps> she's like, oh, okay, okay. Now, at that point, I was like, oh, Lord, it's go time. I'm really about to start feeling these contractions. Here we go. It was a big burst, y'all. I mean, little, little, ugh. I hate that part about the pregnancy. I didn't like it with CJ either. So, I get back on the ball. And them contractions, y'all, they were still two minutes apart, but they started getting real. Ooh, I had to be about seven centimeters sitting on that ball, and I couldn't breathe through my contractions anymore. Up until this point, I was doing the, the, I was killing it. I was doing great. And I said, I cannot breathe through them anymore. Even Chris was like, you're going to get it? Are you serious? He thought I was doing great. I was like, babe, I can't breathe through them anymore. I hit that call bell for that epidural. My nurse comes in. She's getting my IVs ready. So all I had to do was focus on just breathing through these contractions to the anesthesiologist came in. So I'm breathing. <sighs> my nurse is encouraging me. She's like, you're doing so good. You're doing so good. She's like, hon, they're going to get a little more intense, okay? You're soon going to be at a seven or an eight or whatever. Y'all, it went by so quick. I'm on the ball. I'm about seven or eight. The anesthesiologist comes in. I'm tuning out everything she's saying, all right? She's talking and talking and, oh, you know, this risk, this risk. I'm just like, <sighs> like, I'm looking real ugly. So then I have to get on the bed, and you know you have to do the whole cat curl with your back. So I'm cat curled over. This is so serious. You know, with the epidural, you cannot move. You don't want to risk getting paralyzed because you move while they put a needle in your spine. So my nurse is just holding me. This is where you have to test and see, are you a woman or not? Like, because your contractions are still coming and you're getting a needle in your spine. Okay, y'all. All right. So I'm doing that. I'm doing that. Then I get laid flat. Now, contractions were not that bad with me sitting up. They had to lay me back flat so the medicine could distribute. They laid me back, y'all. I felt a contraction that sent me into a groan and a moan. They literally laid me back. I feel a contraction. I go, oh, like Chris comes running. I'm like, oh. the nurse goes, oh, my God. Oh, because she didn't hear me make no noise the whole time. She's like, let me check your cervix. She puts her hand down there and she goes, oh, his head is right there. That means I was about at a nine centimeter, y'all. And guess what? My epidural didn't even kick in yet. The epidural was at my toes. So she's like, do you feel numb? I'm like, no. I'm like, is it going to work? Is it going to work? I felt like a freaking punk. And she was like, where do you feel it? I'm like, I feel it in my feet. And she's like, okay, it's going to work its way up. What kind of epidural? Y'all, with CJ, it was waist down, okay? You immediately felt that thing go down your little thighs and everything. You was feeling good. This epidural was from the feet up. I don't know. So long story short, I start feeling numbness coming. I felt about three contractions, y'all, at a nine centimeter. <sighs> oh, it was not fun. I, for them women that go natural, I don't have no hat, but I tip it off to you, baby girl. Now I see why people do it because at that point I was already like, near pushing so i can understand just being in pain and just feeling all that final threshold of pain and just being done with it so okay um i begin to feel numb in my thighs i begin to feel it in my pelvis and i felt so good i was just like oh i didn't feel nothing else it was like five minutes of like oh and then she's like okay we're having a baby you're at 10 let's get ready to push i'm like really y'all so they position my thighs. Chris is holding a leg up. The nurse holding a leg up. And they have me pushing. 
I pushed for about 30 minutes and my son came. And I think the reason, I mean, that is not long to me. I actually felt like that was for my first time. That wasn't bad because, you know, you take your 10, 10 breaths of push, relax and do it again and relax and relax. I was so numb. I felt nothing. I zero. I felt zero nothing okay his head was coming out and i did not even feel it which kind of didn't help because they're like oh keep going keep going push 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 and i'm like i don't feel nothing and they're like oh we see his head oh he got all this hair they all getting hype and stuff and i'm like i still don't feel anything so i remember i did a couple curls she kept telling me to curl over the baby curl over curl over whatever i did that did that a couple times and he was out and he was on my chest and I had my successful VBAC. It, yes, y'all. So I got to experience contractions for real, for real. Um, I got to experience how his, ugh, how his head felt down there, which was very painful. And I don't want to scare anybody because everybody has a different pain tolerance. Um, if anybody wants to know, I got my epidural around seven centimeters. I'm going to say seven. I probably was an eight. Obviously, when they laid me down, like I said, his head was there. So it got quick, very fast. Just know when you don't use an epidural, your body does things very, very quick. Um, I feel like that was kind of one of the negatives with CJ. My epidural kind of slowed things down. And at six centimeters with CJ, my cervix swelled. And I got my epidural at four centimeters with CJ, which I probably should have waited because truthfully, them contractions was feeling like period cramps at four centimeters. Okay. They get real at trans, uh, what they call Oh my gosh. What do they call it? I'm having a brain fart. Uh, transitional labor, which is around seven centimeters. Then it starts to get real. Okay. Um, so yeah, I got to have my birth the way I wanted to. I don't want this video to be super duper long because there's some other subtopics I want to talk about, but I just wanted to encourage anybody who wants to have a vaginal birth after cesarean it is possible. Um, your doctor team has to be on your side. It has to be something that they're willing to do. Like one doctor even told me that she was not comfortable with doing it, but another doctor was. And I just prayed over my doctors, you know, help them Lord to feel confident, help them to know that they can do this. Um, God gets all the credit and the glory for this birth. My dilation, my um, water breaking on its own, like he gets the credit for everything literally gets the credit for everything um and i could not have done this without him i could not have labored through those contractions without the lord jesus without peace and without knowing that my body's able to do this oh and your girl is still intact i know this is tmi but nothing tore and i asked the doctor i'm like did i tear did i tear did i tear down there because i seen her stitching some and she said no honey no and i'm like and i just kept asking her like are you sure are you sure and that's what i had to weigh out y'all i had to weigh out Either get recut abdominally or my vagina tear. And I was like, okay, I guess my vagina can tear. And it didn't even tear. All right, TMI, this video is long. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope to have more video and content for you guys. I want to do a, my uh, body postpartum because if anybody knows, I did not gain a whole bunch of weight this pregnancy. And I would love to show you guys how my body's doing. I might wait like until a month postpartum. We'll see, but I love you guys. Thanks for tuning in, and I hope to keep posting videos, even though I'm super duper tired as a mama of two now, and I have all the stuff on my plate, including school. I love you guys. Be blessed, and I'll see you guys another time.